Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Rob Streche. Rob, we talk a lot about AI on the show, the immense potential of it, but there are still a lot of problems with it. It hallucinates, you can't control it, you don't know who has access. Yeah, I, I think again, it, it takes a village to really get AI right, and it, it's one of these things that organizations need to look outside themselves to understand, and I think partners of people like Informatica are there helping implement that and bring it to reality. Well, a great segue to introduce our next guest. He is Narayan Kamat, he, General Manager and Global Head of Informatica Alliances at Wipro. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, Narayan. Thank you for having me here. Good to meet you, Rob, Rebecca. Yes. So, uh, we were just talking about, about the, the problems with AI, and, and you, you're here to talk to us about trusted AI, and, yep. and how Wipro is driving innovation in this emerging area. Why don't you start with, by just defining what is trusted AI? Sure, uh, one of the things that we have seen lately, I mean, uh, we've been working with Informatica for the last 20 years, we've grown with them. Uh, we try to be ahead from a, from a market perspective, ahead of the curve. And Wipro recently announced uh, the AI 360, a billion dollar plan investing into Gen AI. We have about 600 plus uh, AI ML models that are patented. So we are trying to be bring that forth that change uh, and that vision into our partnership and our GTMs too. So in line with that, I mean, when we go to our customers and talk about uh, data governance and security and quality of the data, it's all important, but it's all good IT talk. It starts well, but by the time uh, it's DOA, when it, by the time it goes to the business, right? I mean, the, when the business is the first version of it, what does it mean to it, us, right? What do I trust? I know. What are the metrics around it? So after thoughts come in. So we have used AI, uh, a lot of AI, to bring a lot of relevance into how can we get a data trustworthy to our businesses, right? So there are two components to it. The first component is what we call it is a digital data trust, wherein we are trying to create metrics around the quality of the data that is coming in. I mean, if you look at the personas of business, be it customer centricity, be it security, be it supply chain, you could have different personas, and the tenets to that would be data control, data governance, security, quality, right? How do I define metrics to that? And saying that I create weightage goals in terms of what is the business value to it, and the business can look at those metrics on a dashboard and say, What's the scale of trustworthiness to that? So that is pure play from a construct of data trustworthiness. Now where AI comes to play is we are building a lot of Gen AI models for our customers. To When we bring build those Gen AI models, now the question is how can we have trustworthy AI? Or we call it responsible AI. Now if you create uh, parameters towards it, the parameters could be personal based and people is it the data is non-biased, is it private, if it is social, is it traceable, is it true, is it auditable, track trackable, if it is technology, privacy, security, and all the tenets of the data come in, then sustainability. So those parameters are questioned when you build AI models. So what we have is a framework called Vega Framework, which is Wipro Enterprise Gen AI Framework. We try to build in the components of responsible AI on the scale that I just talked about. And what drives that intensity towards making the data responsible is what we derive from you know, our partners like Informatic. I talked about the data trust and the metrics that feeds in. So 60% of our data, 60 to 70% of our data fades into AI. So your AI is as good as the quality of your data. Yeah. Right, so we use Gen AI, trusted Gen AI, fed by what Informatica and Wipro do today to propel trusted data for our enterprise, for our business. And that's why, that's how we build confidence across the business. Because your buyer at the end of the day is a business. They need to trust your data and your AI models. So this scenario is called trusted AI, driven by uh, a data digital repository on, on you know, trusted data, driven by informatic components of governance, lineage, data security, all of those. So, so what you've done is kind of wrapped around some of the Informatica tool set Absolutely. and platform, a, a lot of things that can help organizations kind of leapfrog. Because to your point, uh, 
again, having been in this industry for more than a, one moon or so, <laughs> uh, when you start to look at it, AI or her, legacy AI or heritage AI, whatever you want to call ML AI before ChatGPT, yes. really there were things that you did. Like if you were building a recommendations engine for uh, you're a retailer and you're yep. building a recommendations engine. That was using AI ML underneath. You were building algorithms and things like that. You wanted it to be trusted, otherwise people would stop shopping with you. Absolutely. What are some of the things that you see and that from a consultancy perspective, you're bringing and wrapping around the tool sets that help people kind of leapfrog? Because I think there's a, a lot of people at the top of the pyramid that have a lot of money and they can throw bodies at it and internally and stuff. But there's a lot of people in that middle that are sitting there, they're like, we're being told we have to do AI and gen AI. What, what, are, what are some of the things that you can help wrap around and bring with Informatica? Yeah. That's, that's a dogma that we're trying to shatter in a way uh, because your LLMs and, and Gen AI that need not be difficult for organization to, to incorporate. I mean, what we are building for them is end-to-end, -end, you know, a template where they can safely uh, you know, make it reasonable and you know, responsible for enterprises, right? So right from the data preparation to the Gen AI LLM model implementation, we work closely with the data governance component, the CLAR engine of, of Informatica along with our models, along with our process to do so. So you asked me what does it mean from a different organizational standpoint. So what this, uh, our framework does is takes away what we call it as hal data hallucinations, for example. So those are, even though your answers are right, but those are not biased or you know, AI you know, in, interprets in different ways. How can you make sure it's true? So we try to take away the hallucinations. We want to make sure it's unbiased. How do I build security into that? How can I make it traceable? So all the components cover of governance and make it you know, trustworthy built into it is a framework. So if an organization, for example, wants to build a, a supply chain LNM, it could be scary, as you said. It could take six months to do them. We're trying to make it easy, saying that, look, this is a template. We've done this before. This is the failure points. These are the risks. If none of the metrics means your model is at risk. So we make it easier, and they know exactly what is the weightage on the model in terms of data being right. Right. A few days ago, we had a, a very reasonable debate on this from an insurance company, uh, wherein you can ask which was a player in East Coast who had a knee surgery and whatnot. And that would come in with an actual player. There was a player, we might not give you data, but you can ask the LLM what other operations or what other medical processes did that player have, and they would give out wherein the data security is not there and it would have, the bias control wouldn't be there. So how do you make a uh, model trustworthy so that it understands to take away those hallucinations and answer rightfully while safeguarding the social or the personal securities of the question or, or the intended you know, persona, for example. So I know that Wipro has advisory and consulting services to, to, to help ease these transitions for the companies that have been told that they need to do AI. So how, how are you sharing best practices and making sure that, that your, your customers can feel that, okay, we are getting, we are getting the, the gold standard here? Absolutely, and as I said, as I mentioned, I mean, we've started AI much more than this wave was. I mean, we already have 600 plus patents that we have done in AI ML. Now, we have an entire framework called WDIS, the Pro Data Information System. This is end-to-end -end work of data integration to digital transformation to AI. So we have a bunch of over two, 300 use cases of data analytics and AI that we have implemented that is, again, split by different sectors and industry sectors. And we try to, let's say, for healthcare, for retail, but for banking, financial, it could be rest and security. So based on that, we have a lot of uh, use cases that we, we, we take to our customers. For example, uh, we pre-acquired a company called Capco, which is you know, a financial services company. So we use a lot of consulting mode to get into you know, business in to technology view of how we resolve those problems through AI. So uh, we have, as I said, I mean, we are at the forefront when we are double downing, doubling down on the investments we are making. I mean, it's a billion dollar into AI 360 program for the very same reasons to bring those use cases to market. We want to, the market to see what we have you know, uh, offering uh, through our partners, through Informatica, through many more partners that we do. And we are quite excited about it. 
Yeah, I, I think one of the things that and challenges that we have seen when we talk to organizations is really around integration with existing systems and how they get the data because a lot of times the data is siloed in various different places. How do you really help them bring it all together? Again, multiple ways. I mean, you could, I mean, we can talk about different kinds of data meshes to bring it all together or you can have a very standard, you know, template that we typically follow end-to-end -end data integration to modernization templates. But you are right, I mean, we have a number of, I mean, you, you would hear tomorrow from Informatica too, they are also expanding to create those, uh, you know, integrations across, for example, Snowflake and Databricks, other partners that we work with. So we see a lot of coexistence where we bring the power of Snowflake you know, data exchange or a Databricks from an AI standpoint, but Informatica plays a key role in terms of bringing the integration creating the data security and governance layer today, which is a huge demand, especially for data on cloud, because it's always an afterthought, you get the data on cloud, what do I do with the rest of the components? That's where an organization like Informatica and, and Wipro play a role where we help enterprises bring all this together in a structure, a beat, a traditional beat, a mesh architecture, to bring it together, and that's where I call the, uh, our framework called the WDIS, which kind of puts all those plugs in place, powered by Informatica as a backbone to bring it all together for our customers. What about monitoring and maintenance? Because we know that, that AI is not just a one and done kind of deal, it does require constant monitoring. Absolutely. How, what's, what is Wipro's approach? We provide an end-to-end -end managed system. As I said, it's not just one time go and you, you create a model and deploy it, but it's about how do I train, how do I manage, and how do I monitor. The monitoring aspect is the most important, especially on the quality of data and the acceptance from, you know, the governance, when we talk about it, we typically look at from a technology angle and we think it's easier, but when it comes to business, the trust of data is to be monitored on a constant basis because, you know, you could have financial data reported into the market, you could have sales information, or you could have manufacturing data going on, and you don't trust the data, you got a big chunk of, you know, things that you don't need on the table. So the aspect of continuous monitoring is what we do as part of our managed services. So we not only start from blueprinting to implementation, we have a large team that, that works constantly on not only supporting it from a managed services standpoint, but to continuously optimize it for our customers to make it better. Yeah, so when you see, because you see a lot of customers and you have a lot of patents and a lot of technology, and when you talk about the framework and things of that nature, there have to be some natural getting started spots or use cases. What are you, what are you seeing out there for organizations where things they should start to consider if they haven't already started down this journey? Uh, are you talking from a technology standpoint or from a business no, from, standpoint? No, from a business standpoint. When you, when you look at it and go, hey, you know what, one of the easy places might be customer success or customer support or something yeah. of that so nature. So customer experience is a good start point. I mean, I, I always feel that it's a very underrated sometimes and it's a last mile, but I think a lot of success would come from, uh, you know, if you look at a lot of the organization, customer centricity is the main thing. And, and if you look at organizations today, they, they focus a lot on data integration and data part of it, but very little on the customer side and the MDM place side of it. So what we instill in our customers is look, do not forget the customer angle of it, and that's why we play on personas, right? I mean, I talked about, you know, how do I take different persona, because you don't have, you, you'll never have a same solution for every persona. Every persona would need a different solution. You can't throw a technology to different personas. So that's one of the things we would like to create with our customers, uh, create those personas, know what their business needs are, and have a technology roadmap towards that persona. So that is what I would recommend should be a good start for you know, enterprises. Final question, we just had the CIO of, of Informatica on and he was talking about this, this really, this tightrope that, that you need to walk in terms of making sure that you are an enabler of AI and not standing in the way, yep. but also being rightfully cautious and, 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 and thoughtful about your AI strategies. Can you talk about how you walk that tightrope as a leader in your organization? A fantastic question, and I mean, I'm quite excited because I, you know, we had a kind of a preview into what Amit was saying, coming from Gen AI standpoint. I mean, to be specific, Wipro uses a lot of what I talked about, trusted AI you know, and responsible AI within our organization. All of our systems, all of our internal systems have the same policies that I said as a framework in terms of you know, what it means for unbiased, 
uh, trustworthy and you know editable or you know uh, uh, secured AI components is is we do inward first, then we take it to our customers. So we do a lot of that, and we are very specific and we are very very passionate about responsible AI. So within Wipro and then to our customers. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Narayan, for coming Thank on theCUBE. Thank you the so much. Pleasure, pleasure having you on. Pleasure having you too. Nice meeting you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. I stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology enterprise news and analysis.